Hello, good morning. Welcome back to Tarot by Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Hello, good morning, and thank you for being here. I'm still having my coffee. Here we go. I will show you. Boom, boom. I got lots of foam on top. I like my little foam. Kind of make it like cappuccino. Anyways, I was thinking today, I was reading your comments from uh, some of the posts I do, some of those still posts from um, various sources on Twitter and Reddit and Quora. I get all kinds of, I go to all kinds of places hunting around, you guys. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to bring up that uh, Diane, that the stones in Megan's wedding ring are not authentic. Uh, when she went back to have her ring upgraded, they did a downgrade. <laughs> they switched the diamonds. So she doesn't have that. But what she does have, I believe, is still the watch. Diana's watch, I think she still has it, but I'm going to ask. Does Meghan Markle still possess the authentic watch of Diana? Does she still have the authentic version of Diana's? It's, I believe it's Cartier. Cartier watch. Does she have the authentic Cartier watch? Yes. Is it a fake? Is it a fake? No. So there you go. Does she have any stones in her ring that are Diana's? Does she have any stones in her wedding ring? that are Diana's. No. No. So there you have it. So she does have the watch. She also has those really expensive diamond, those expensive um, earrings <clears throat> from the killer that she uh, gladly took, the blood diamond earrings. So those she has, which are, are value. So it'd be difficult probably to get that watch back. Uh, but today I want to find out, I want to, you know, say also uh, if Harry can't change this book situation and do rewriting and having it, apparently right now the editors have it uh, put on, put off to the side because they're doing some finishing touches. So it doesn't seem like they're going to budge. It looks like he's going to fail. It looks like he's going to have to face a lawsuit or go to extreme measures uh, in order to win over them. And my opinion is if he's unable to, and it goes, it goes to print and it gets put out there. He's done. He's completely roasted. Uh, he, he's at high risk for suicide. Um, and I think that if he's not able to fix the situation, she will actually egg it on. Uh, narcs are known to egg it on and um, feel nothing for it because they have no empathy, as we know. And it's because they don't have that second voice living within them. That second voice is our conscience. She doesn't have that second voice. It's just not there. Harry has the second voice living in within him. Otherwise, I wouldn't be getting the hermit card over and over and over again. He was born to soul search and withdrawal from others. Uh, that is just how he is. Uh, so I think he's high risk. And I've said this before. Uh, and she would probably gladly encourage it. It wouldn't bother her because she got her aim. She got her prime aims. So let's pull some cards. And I'm using this deck today, the Joker deck. Because it is a big joke. The whole life has been nothing but a big fantasy, an illusion. And uh, so I'm going to pull uh, three cards. And then I'm going to clarify. And that turned over. Got to flip it back. Here we go. Harry, Harry, and how big of a risk is he if he cannot stop this book? Got a couple of them flipping. I'm just going to ignore it because I thought I turned this deck over. Here we go. I've got two. What is it? We have here the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, if it goes through and it spins forward, uh, that's the right time. It's the time they want to do it. They're going to push forward. This is sort of uh, it's supposed to be good karma, but for him, I think it's bad karma because we have the Knight of Wands uh, in reverse, in the reverse position, H unable to stop it. Uh, here, he wants to stop the work. Let's stop it. Let's stop everything. Can we just put it, shelf it? I want to shelf it, in essence. Uh, not being, not giving up on it either. Here, giving up, not being able to. Wants a full stop. Wants a full stop, but probably unable to do it and falling off his high horse. 
losing because upright, the Knight of Wands is winning. Here, this is them saying, we're going full, full, full head on here. Uh, that, that, that wheel is spinning. We're going to do it. You know, you're like that little hamster in the wheel and we're using you and we're going full board. And there he is looking at it with absolute horror, uh, and not wanting it. And then look at the reactions of other people here going, Oh my God, really? Did he really say that? Uh, and here being in reverse here, it's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm winning. You know, I'm feeling like I'm just this winner in society. I'm living well. I'm moving forward. I'm doing things on my own terms here. Uh, I don't give up here. It's giving up and uh, not getting the results he wants. It's hitting a wall on your progression, landing on your head, wanting a full stop, and not getting anything happening on his end of what he wants. It's losing. It's a losing position and falling on your head. So him, he's fallen off his horse. It's looking like he is going to fall off his high horse, that this is going to go ahead. Uh, because I've been wondering about it, you know, I've been keeping close tabs on how things are going. And it's looking like he's not going to be able to stop it without a lawsuit. They're just like, hey, we're going on. This is, you're caught up in this hamster wheel. It's a hamster wheel that's going to keep spinning and spinning. He's looking at, on with absolute horror. Uh, everyone's looking at it in horror. The family is. I think they do want to stop it, but they're going to have to do something. So let's get to the challenging position. Challenging position, I have two here. Challenging position is the two of wands in reverse. It's trying to stop that fork in the road. Uh, it was a bad plan, avoiding risk, uh, taking no action, and overanalyzing. So it was a bad plan uh, here. Uh, the fork in the road's kind of closing down on him, not having any options, and uh, losing. Uh, the growth in reverse, he's not going to be able to chart a better path for himself, uh, which would be stopping it and charting a path and having options and dualities and being able to go down a different, better road for himself. Here it's like, no, sorry, clown, you're not doing it. Uh, sorry, clown, you made the wrong move and now you're going to suffer. You're, you're, you're now going to have this problem. It was a very bad plan to do it and to even to entertain it in the first place was a really bad idea. And that's the challenging position. He wants fork in the roads. He wants to be able to make decisions, which I said yesterday uh, with that seven of cups being the final call card being like he's, he was head over in his head in clouds and living love fantasy land life. Uh, bad idea. He was living in her fantasy life and fantasy dreams and he bought into it and he just kind of anchored on and mirrored her. Uh, I think he does this mirroring thing too uh, because that was a way to survive being in the relationship. And then we have here with the six of swords, it's all a lie. It's a book of lies. It's a book of dishonesty and trying to get what he wanted, hoping no one would know. It's a brittle ego. It's a very dishonorable act. It is the snake in the grass. And he knows it. And he cannot stop that fork in the road. So it's looking like it's going to go to print. It's looking like it's going to uh, become his worst nightmare, which will, he's very high suicide risk. He may not survive this situation. The only way I think Harry will survive is if he could stop everything and get things his way. He likes getting his way. He's only, he's, that's the only thing he knows. And if he can't get his way, it'll be everybody else's fault. He'll do it in pity and it'll be everybody else's fault because he couldn't win. Uh, the guy does not have any emotional maturity whatsoever. We're talking a toddler here. He's like, he will have major rage to the point of suicide is how I feel. Let's get to the focal point here. The focal point for Harry. <clears throat> Focal point here. Yep, he cannot make his crop work for him. Four of wands in reverse. Yeah, he will not be accepted in the family if it goes out. That is four wall structure in reverse. Being able to grow with your family tree, taking that tree and building a forest with them, in essence, a crop. Uh, this here is total growth, you know, building up your growth and being able to pick your lovely fruit from the tree of life 
and working with your family, getting along with your family. You see there's a castle in the background. You know, there's all kinds of the fruits of life being, this is what he wants to go back to. He wants to go back to the fruit of life. He wants that growth. He wants that. He wants the, the he wants to live among uh, just the luxury that they provided. He wants it back. He wants that new site. That's a scythe thick thing. It's like kind of like a new lease in life, being able to harvest what you want in life. It's a good, stable home and work environment with celebrations. It's stable environment, feeling free, you know, feeling happy and content. Fours represent, you know, grounded and a strong foundation. It came in reverse. It's everything the opposite of the upright. It's the opposite of the upright completely. Let's get to the past position. Past position that no longer serves. Past position that no longer serves is the five of wands, which is disagreements and the battle of the egos and rivalry and dominance and competition and doing all kinds of busy activity uh, to fight with his family, which is putting out the memoir because that was part of his fight, part of his argument, part of his disagreement part of his ego, part of his problems. It's always been his problem. His problem has always been his ego. He's always had a very, very fragile, brittle, brittle ego. That's what this is. It's a brittle ego. He's always had a brittle ego. He's always had uh, a temper, a temper on him and always very, just a very embattled individual with a brittle ego, always starting some kind of drama and chaos. So that's why he, he married, that's why he hooked up with her. Uh, it was like energy. He has that in him and so does she. And you you attract like energy. And so she was sort of attracted to that. She knew she could tap into that even deeper. Because it was always there. It was always there. I mean, here they're like self-flagellating each other. Look at them. They're whipping, whipping each other. You know, here's Harry clowning around. You know, he's got this wisdom flying over his head. With the house behind him, I'm just going to battle it out with my whole family here. I'm smarter. I know better. I know better. No, you don't. No, you don't. Let's fight it out in the field. You know, let's take it out to the field and fight. Uh, yeah, he loves to fight out in the field. You know, he probably misses being in the military, even though he protected them. They protected him. He's got this this battled energy. I mean, he's constantly in battle with himself. So, so then what does he do? He's got to battle it out with everyone else because that's his comfort zone. His comfort zone is battling. He's got to make the external environment fit his internal, which is brittle ego. I'm going to fight with you because I fight inside all the time within my own head here. So I'm going to make you fight with me physically. We're going to bring it to life because I'm always feeling that way, which is very disordered thinking. That is how they think. If I'm feeling this, I'm going to make you feel this way too because it's not fair that I'm the only one who thinks this way. So you're going to match my energy. And that's basically what happens in his marriage. They match each other's energy on that. Let's get to the hidden energy. The hidden energy. Hidden energy that they, he doesn't want people to know is three of cups in reverse. He knows he has no support, no social life. Nobody likes him anymore. He's got very few friends, if any. Uh, he's got Nacho. Uh, he might have one or two, you know, that uh, Hollywood father that he likes to look up to. But other than Nacho and that man, uh, I don't think he has much. Uh, so this is no safety net. He knows he will not have a safety net. His safety net of his family will not be there for him. It's, it's reversed. That no stability, no safety net. He wants a safety net back. Even though he's he likes to battle it out and go to war because he's such an injured, mentally injured, dysregulated, emotionally messed up individual. Uh, so this is not looking good. Yep, this is exactly the way I would see it for someone heading into suicide, to be honest. I'd be someone who would have to come in at the last minute and rescue him and save him from himself. And that's exactly what he'd be probably hoping for. But the fact that no one has interest and there's no safety net and they would be saying, uncle, and yeah, you're on your own, buddy. Uh, this is it. You know, what he does with them, he does with himself. This is the cause and effect. That's where there, we would have a completion. Uh, it would only be if someone comes in and saves him on that final, final minutes and rescuing him and catches him in the act, for instance, uh, and getting him hospitalized. 
Uh, and then at that point in time, he still would be out. He'd still be out. He still wouldn't have the safety net of his family. Uh, yeah, uh, they could put him off to the side somewhere uh, and just sort of semi, pretty much kind of ignore him, uh, let him try and heal. Uh, William would never trust him. William would never let him in. I think they'd have uh, minor exchanges. Uh, I've thought about this. I've meditated on it. And uh, William would just be very surfaced conversation, weather, uh, polo, uh, food, uh, maybe politics, but anything personal, deeply personal would never be shared ever. It would be very, very surfaced, uh, because he would at that point in time kind of view him as very psychopathic and toxic. And, uh, it's not safe to share anything personal, nothing personal that can be, be shared. So let's go to the future, the future for Harry. And if this, uh, he cannot stop the memoir, if he cannot stop and put a halt to it, what is likely to happen? Where's the energy heading? The Hierophant. Yeah, the judge. There we go. This is what I was saying yesterday. He could take it to court. Uh, this is wanting to take that podium, you know, wanting that leadership, government. Take it to the government. Take it to the government. Seek counsel. Uh, it also represents divor divorce, too. Uh, getting a divorce, even though it's not in reverse, but this here, as you can see, I'm feeling with this in upright. Yeah, he would feel very judged too. He would feel very judged by the family. The whole family values would be under attack and he knows he needs to level up. He knows the family's going to attack him and judge him harshly in that position. We're going to judge you uh, I don't know about you. You're, you know, you're, you're a traitor. There's Harry right here, a traitor. There, there's the family judging him harshly, being judged harshly from the family values. You, what family values do you have? Look at, look at the family values, Harry. Look what you gave up. Look what you gave up. You have no safety net and you gave up your family values. And here you are almost literally under arrest here in front of a judge, jury, executioner of the family. So, yeah, family values is what he would like to have. He wants to get back to the family values, but he may not be able to. And he knows that this is everything's on the line to keep the safety net. Let's get to the feelings in the situation. Oh, that pop. Feelings in the situation, 7 of swords. Well, 7 of swords is here determined to see clearly. Uh he has his head in the clouds, an illusion fantasy land card. So he wants better choices and decisions. This was that final card I had yesterday. He realizes he's ha he had his head up in the clouds and he was living in a fantasy, Markle's fantasy. He was enjoying the fantasy because they both were sort of combative, combative energy. And that combative energy is what kind of um, made their bond tighter. And so he realizes that that he just was battling in his own head here. Uh, so anyways, there's a lot of confusion over his options and what dreams he can possibly have going into the future. So he knows that things are looking kind of bad and he's going to be told no. He will be told no, no to the safety net, no to the family because this is a no position. And so he is going to be literally pinned against the board and being, you know, it's taking a shot at him. He knows people are going to be taking shots at him because you were living in a fantasy land and you, you, you printed this book of lies and fantasy. What kind of fantasy life is this book? You know? So he's going to be really um, targeted. I feel like he's going to be a total target here of ridicule, target of ridicule. Let's go to the um, outside influences. What I have here is the Knight of Cups in reverse. So the Knight of Cups in reverse is basically emotion. He needs other people to emotionally regulate him. He will not be able to focus on his dreams. People are going to see it as him as a seducing the public because this is a seducer position. Uh, the Knight of Cups in reverse is someone you cannot emotionally trust. This is someone who's going to play you when it's in reverse. I'm playing you. I'm completely, utterly playing you. Uh, there's no emotional truth here. 
I'm just manipulating you. I'm an emotional manipulator. So people are going to see it as total emotional manipulation and needing other people to regulate him by speaking his lies and deceptions and realizing through this emotional manipulation and seduction, he's he has no he will not have a safety net. So that's why he's going to be targeted. He's going to be this target of of wow, what a fantasy land. This guy's full this guy's all caught up in his head looking for options through seduction. So that's basically how he's going to be viewed. Uh, the hopes and fears. The hopes and fears. Hopes and fears. He's going to hope that uh, he can get to the king of wands. King of wands would be the ruler of his own life. So he can he can basically get clear goals. He's going to want some clear goals. He's going to want to feel confident, optimistic, be able to motivate other people, and never stop trying. Um, willing to commit to being a husband father role. I know he still wants to be in that position. He still wants to be a husband. He still wants to be a father. He still wants those things in his life. That dream has not died in him. So that's why I think he would be a risk because he'd be losing it all. Because if she's going to walk, if he, if she can't get that money from the memoir, if Netflix closes down on them, this is going to be a problem for him. Because he still wants this. This is an energy he still wants because he he's jealous of his brother. So he still craves that safety net. He still craves that solid foundation. You know, uh, he's got to give up that combative energy. So let's get to the to the final outcome. The final outcome. The final outcome. Final outcome is the nine of swords in reverse. Nine of Swords in reverse is life is a complete, utter nightmare. It's the weeping. Uh, feels like a bad omen. Living in a bad omen of depression and rumination. Life is an absolute nightmare. Being told no. No, you're not getting your way. No, the book is going forward. No, no, no. Uh, he doesn't like hearing no. It's still no in reverse, too. Nope, sorry. So this is taking a step back from feeling like life is a nightmare. Still feeling shame. It's a shame-based uh, position. What do people do when they're feeling extreme shame? Being told no. And life is a, a, feels like a bad omen. And you're dealing with extensive shame. Even though you're trying to take a step back from it, what is taking a step back from? Uh, the question was, will he self-harm? Let's get to the bottom of the deck. I have here seven of wands. Seven of Wands, there's like him giving up, trying to give up here. Uh, Seven of Wands is basically trying to protect what you've, what you've accomplished. Uh, perseverance. So he's going to try to be perseverant at the bottom of the deck. He'd like to have perseverance. He wants them to give up on the book. Uh, but the problem is, he's gotten so far on it, uh, they want to push on. They want to push on with his book. And here's Harry. Harry the clown hanging out, hanging out to dry there. They're going to make him hang out to dry. He's going to hang out to dry because they want to keep the book going of everything that's been put into it. The, all the work and effort of editing and uh, all that work. They don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose that. So he's going to be hung out to dry. Uh, let's clarify this card here, which is the shame. Feeling the shame and life feels like a bad omen. The chariot in reverse, yeah, crash and burn, giving up, uh, no longer driving forward in life, no longer having goals to attain, no longer feeling like a winner, you're a loser, you're unreliable, it's the end of the road, cannot control himself. That there to me sounds like a really bad combination, a total crash and burn. Uh, he already had a, a car that was looking pretty rust, rusty there. The Battle of the Wills, uh, you know, trying to win and push forward, uh, getting out of what he thought was cloudy days. He thought he was driving out of his misery with his combative mind, and he was thinking he was repairing himself. Oh, I'm healing. Markle, Megan, Megan saved me. She saved me from this wreckage. No, she didn't save him. All she did was drive him into a total crash and burn. A total crash and burn filled with shame and life is nothing but a bad omen. So being shame-based, giving up, no more dreams and hopes to move forward with. Um, here, it's, it's just total moving in a negative way. 
uh, in that negative way is not looking good. I'm going to calculate those two. Comes to 19. 19 comes to five of clubs, crossroads, competition and struggles. It goes back to the five of clubs. It goes back to the situation that he thought he was leaving behind, which was battling it out with within himself. So he's going to be at an internal battle. Uh, this five, the five of wands is nothing but disagreements, um, rivalry, struggle for dominance. Uh, it's going to be a test of strength for him to not do himself in a very test of strength because he's facing a complete crash and burn and, uh, the lies, uh, being caught up in that hamster wheel, the judgment of the family it's not looking good. It's looking really, really grim for him. And it's looking like they're going to keep going with it and hang him up to dry because we've got so far with this. We want to protect what all the work we put into this. You can't just pull the plug on it. You can't just do what you want because of who you think you are. So let's ask the pendulum. Will Harry succeed? It's stopping the, the 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 writers or the the book will he be able to su succeed at stopping the release will he be able to succeed at stopping the release of his book and all the hard work that they put into it and in editing will he be able to stop it it's a maybe will he try to go to court yes okay yes all right i'm gonna try it again here i want to be sure Will he succeed at stopping the book by going to court? Will he succeed? No. Now, will they push forward and actually release the book? Yes. Has he been making feverish calls and making at last minute attempts? Yes. Is he being told no across the board? Is he being told no across the board? Yes. Yes. So there you have it. Not good for him. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, like and subscribe. Bye.